so dear students we the second we come to the third emerging approach that is the low carbon cities we hear a lot of it today uh, let us understand what is low carbon development now low carbon development is a step by step approach towards carbon neutrality urban resilience and energy security while supporting an active green economy and stable green infrastructure you can see here in this picture about the carbon footprint which is a measure of the total amount of carbon dioxide and methane emissions of a defined population system or activity considering all the relevant sources sinks and storage within the spatial and the temporal boundary of the population system or activity of interest low carbon city is a city that comprises of societies that consume sustainable green technology and emit relatively low carbon as compared with present day practice to avoid adverse impacts of climate change so low carbon city basically has a perspective where or the mandate or target of reducing carbon emissions you can see from this picture that uh, it is this initi initiatives that have aimed at creating a low carbon city which has five prongs that is one is life support which is which is about sharing facilities and equipment about green that is the sharing the rich natural environment about eco life implementing eco and community friendly town development about safety sharing peace of mind in def disaster defense and crime prevention and learning that is sharing learning experiences to nurture the next generation now when did this low carbon movement start or when did this approach come up the low carbon city movement started in the united kingdom to consider how it would lower the production of carbon dioxide four years later in 2007 japan introduced the concept of a low carbon city and the main idea behind the concept was reduced reduce carbon dioxide emissions while creating economic growth the characteristics of a low carbon city pertains to the low carbon urban form that is manifested through efficient use of land through compact mixed use and functionally balanced urban design efficient public transport network quality public spaces which are easily accessible functional and environmental friendly now the second characteristics is about resource and efficiency that is incorporating the concept of circular economy about energy efficient buildings municipal waste as a resource then reclaim restore and reuse water to improve urban ecological water cycle now the third characteristics is about inclusive urban governance that is transition from city management to city governance by incorporating public participation maintaining information and maintaining transparency now let us come to the examples of low carbon cities shanghai is the biggest global financial hub of china with a population of 24 million and an area of about 6340 square kilometers challenges of um, shanghai was that industry and power sectors dominate the carbon dioxide emissions per capita as you can see in this graph now the strategies that shanghai has used in order to overcome the challenges were coordinated policies for carbon emission reduction then provision of market incentives creation of better land use efficiency and implementing bicycling uh, cycle tracks then carpooling mobile apps and also green spaces along the rivers were developed our next case study is singapore singapore is located on you can see the location here is located between the southeast coast of mainland china and the northern edge of hong kong 
population of about 5.7 million and area of about 719.9 that is 720 square kilometers. The main challenge were, challenges were which Singapore faced was water supply, then climate change and transportation. So the strategies which they adopted for water supply was adoption of a four tap strategy which talked about improvement of water catchment of reservoirs, recycling of water and desalinization. Regarding climate change, uh, to combat the heat stress, the city had adopted a comprehensive tree planting and greening program as a vision of, of uh, Singapore as a green uh, garden city. Then streetscape greenery master plan for entire road network including coastal areas and forest areas were put forth. Then building treatment that is rooftop gardens, greenery walls, thermally, thermal friendly building materials that would improve ventilation and wind tunnel effect were promoted. There was education and awareness creation on implications of global warming, simulation of energy efficient behavior and practices. There were programs conducted to educate public of technologies or actions for energy savings. Energy efficient buildings were also proposed. Then there was capacity building, uh, research, uh, 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 research and development programs and then innovation for environmental sustainability fund was there. So regarding the transport which was one of the challenges to overcome the problems of related to transport, they improved and encouraged use of public transport, tried to improve the fuel economy, promoted green vehicles and used energy efficient road construction and maintenance techniques. Shenzhen in China you can see the location of Shenzhen has a population of 10 million and an area of about 2000 square kilometer. The main challenges were urban sprawl, high energy consumption and carbon dioxide emission and traffic congestion. Shenzhen's uh, urban sprawl was overcome by delimiting of ecological baseline to maintain ecological security. And you can see from this drawing the basic ecological control line of Shenzhen. There was measures like density zoning which was proposed in the plan, master plan to improve land use efficiency. Then urban renewal for efficient uses of land was proposed within the city. A hierarchy of green spaces were put forth as outskirt parks, urban parks and community parks. There was Shenzhen developed an environment friendly transport plan and you can see from this drawing this plan of public transit and with the railway traffic as the pillar.